Today was Tanya's birthday. The last of the many gifts was a teddy bear, a brown one with a red band around its neck. It's the best present of them all, she said, giving both her parents a big hug. Go round, get it, Micah said, excited. Malik jumped over the barrel and stuck his pointer stick down behind it. Got it! Proud, he held the rat in the air. It was still shaking. They said there were other lands far away on the other side of huge walls and on the other side of the sea. Lands where they used the things made in the factories, ate the food grown in the fields. Here there was nothing. Micah opened the little hatch to get into the underground tunnels. Sewers, they were once called. Now they were homes. Micah's mother was waiting. Look, we got a rat! Thank God, she said. One rat weren't much food, but at least it was a big one. She started the electric oven. Lights went out. Not again. She got a torch. She went through a door and down the hallway. She came back with a dark look on her face. A piece of the generator is broken, she said, looking at Micah. Your father got into the factory and stole it, but it was a lot less guarded back then. Now it's even more difficult than when he... She stopped. I'll go, Malak said. You? You're just a child. It's too dangerous. You're so nice to me. I want to help. And I know how to get into the factory. Micah's mother said nothing, just looked at the little boy who had arrived so suddenly all alone. Besides, I'm not as clumsy as you grown-ups. He laughed. She didn't, but it was settled. It was dark, but the dry sand did not give much shelter. Malak heard a metallic sound nearby, a robot. It walked on two legs, had guns for arms, grenade launchers, a killing machine, hunting humans. Malak had seen them before many times. In the distance he could see the flying ones. He was more scared of the walker, even though the others were more dangerous. The walkers moved almost like humans. He got closer to the big factory buildings. He moved low so the robots would not see him. He got in where the cotton entered and jumped onto the assembly line. Today Tanya was going to the park with her mom and dad. People mostly did what they wanted. No one hardly worked anymore. There was no need. She brought her little teddy, her new favorite toy. There were knives cutting the cotton. They were getting closer, fast. Malak crawled the opposite way, but not fast enough. A gap on one side, passing by just for a moment. He jumped in. He came out under the lines. There were robots everywhere. Some seemed harmless, working, moving things. Others he knew from before. He moved under the lines until he found the machine Micah's mother had told him about. He started screwing off the screws. Remove the plate on the side. There it was. The piece she had shown him. The machine stopped. Alarm. He hurried towards the hole he'd come in from. A robot was blocking the way. Two drones were moving in under the assembly lines. The park was as beautiful as always. Kids playing, adults chatting. Life had become so easy. Tanya was sitting on the bench watching actors doing a play. Real art. Art created for the art itself, not to survive, not to make money. Her teddy was lying on the bench beside her. She was laughing, applauding. Malak got up between the assembly lines. Gunshots. He ran, stepping on toys and things going down the line. Through the opening he could see the cotton fields. Where there once had been people living, cultivating food for the families, now there was cotton as far as the eye could see. Enormous machines were harvesting. Any living creature entering would be killed. Far below he saw transport vehicles going in and out through the highly guarded gate. The fall was too high. He turned, wanted to run back. A machine gun pointed straight at him. He fell over the edge. I forgot my teddy bear. We can't go back now. There's no time. Grandma's waiting. But I really liked him. Don't worry, sweetheart. We can always buy you a new one. Micah's mother was standing by her kitchen. Tears were running down her cheeks. If the poor child wasn't back by now, he probably wouldn't be. She shook her head, looking down on the floor in shame. She looked up fast. The hatch was opening. Malak came in. He had scratches and wounds all over, and his clothes were even worse than when he left. But he was whole and alive. He had a metal lever in one hand, a piece to the electricity generator. 
In the other he held a teddy bear, a brown one with a red band around its neck.